Professor Dr. Tan Sui Beng is Professor of Ethnomusicology at the School of Arts, University Science Malaysia, Penang. She is the author of Bangsawan, a social and stylistic history of popular Malay opera. She co-authored the book, Music of Malaysia, Classical Folk and Syncretic Traditions, and Longing for the Past, the 78 RPM Era in Southeast Asia, which won the joint SEM Bruno Nettel Prize in 2014. Professor Dr. Tan has been actively researching on the Baba and Nonya cultures of Penang for the past three decades and published her works in the recent book entitled Eclectic Cultures for All. She is a keen exponent of engaged community theatre for young people and is currently involved in revitalising the Po Tehi Glove Puppet Theatre of Penang through documentation and performances. Professor Dr Tan collaborated with the traditional performers and young people of Penang to publish the multimedia book set entitled Potehi, Glove Puppet Theatre of Penang and Evolving Heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Dr Tan Sui Beng. I would like to thank the State Chinese Penang Association for inviting me to speak at the 100th anniversary of the association. It is an honour to share my long-term research on the performing arts of the Baba and Nyonya of Penang. Let me begin with a verse from the poem Chap Gome, meaning the 15th night of Chinese New Year, in Penang Hokkien, composed by the late Baba Johnny Chi and translated into English by Lim Po King. The 15th day of the first moon is an auspicious day. After the celebrations are over, a good rest would be underway. At early morning, the cooking of pengat and glutinous rice. In the evening, is a gala time out for all so nice. As a child in the 1960s, I remember being spellbound by the Dondam Sayang love song, sung by singers in a moving bus. The full moon, bright lights, and long lines of honking cars when my parents drove the family around on this special night. But it was in 1986 when I was conducting research on the Malay performing arts of Penang that I had the opportunity to sit in the brightly decorated bus from the Dondam Sayang Club of Penang. This experience stimulated my interest to delve deeper into the cultural past of Baba and Nyonya or Peranakan Chinese in Penang. I was particularly interested to find out why and how they have created cultures that were open to different races and included Malay musicians in their celebrations and performances. We can also learn from the Baba and Nyonya as we search for our Malaysian identities 
in an ethnically polarized society. This paper provides an account of the development of the amateur Malay opera or Bangsawan theater among the Straits Chinese in pre-World War II period. This is followed by a discussion of the amateur musical or minstrel groups that were active in the Chap Gomez celebrations in Penang from the 1910s to the 1960s. Notably, I highlight some of the subtle differences in the shared performing genres and festivals of the Baba and Nyonya of Penang, Malacca and Singapore. Let me be explain some of the terms that I will be using. The names are located in history. The Chinese Peranakan refer to the local born offspring of the early Hokkien Chinese traders from Fujian province who came to trade in the Strait Settlements in the 15th to the mid 19th centuries. They made the Strait Settlements their home. They called themselves Baba for men and Nyonya for women to distinguish themselves from the newcomers or Sinkan. In the early 20th century, the Chinese Peranakan men who lived in the Straits settlements began to identify themselves as Straits Chinese or Straits born Chinese. They learned English and adapted to British ways in order to further their economic and social status as bankers, traders, lawyers, and doctors. They were British subjects who could stand for municipal council elections. Trade networks and the steamship routes between Singapore, Malacca, Madan, Phuket and Rangoon encouraged cross-cultural interactions and intermarriages between the Peranakan Chinese of these cities. Businessmen from Madan and tin miners from Phuket married the Nyonya of Penang and sent their children to study English in Penang. This resulted in the creation of distinct heterogeneous Chinese Peranakan identities, especially in Penang. The Baba and Nyonya of Malacca and Singapore were culturally similar as many of the Singapore Chinese Peranakan originated from Malacca and spoke a type of Baba Malay Patois. In contrast, the Penang Chinese Peranakan culture evolved from the interactions with local Chinese Hokkien and Siamese Burmese communities. The Nyonya in particular employed more Siamese elements in their cuisine, costumes and hairdo that were shared by those in Medan and Phuket. As early as 1898, an article in the Straits Chinese magazine by an anonymous author states, our Penang friends form almost a distinct community, differing in speech, customs and manners from the Chinese in Singapore. The Penang Peranakan spoke Baba Hokkien, even though they took an interest in Malay, Pantun and music. For social and economic reasons, they blended with the larger Hokkien immigrant community to a greater extent, strengthened their clan and dialect group ties, practice ancestor worship and celebrated Chinese festivals. At the same time, the Chinese Pranakan loved to improvise Malay Pantun in Dondan Sayam singing, dance the wrong game and perform in Malay Bangsawan theatre. What were the similarities and differences between the Penang performing art forms with those of the South? The Peranakan continued to celebrate the festivals, albeit in different ways. The Straits Chinese contributed to the street festivals and parades that Penang has been famous for. The festivals were open to all types of people who lined the roads to watch. For the rich, these parades were ways to show off their wealth. Besides the Dondam Sayang that was described earlier, other celebrations included the Chingge for Tua Pek Kong's birthday with decorated lorries and cars with young girls seated on them.
During the Baba Nyonya wedding, an outdoor entourage follows the groom as he travels to the bride's house. Later on, honking cars mark this journey. The Bangsawan or Malay Opera was the all-time favourite among the Chinese Peranakan since the late 19th century. Bangsawan was the first commercial musical theatre in British Malaya that used a raised proscenium stage and a Western orchestra. It was influenced by the Parsi Theatre of Bombay that toured Southeast Asia. In 1885, Mamat Pushi, a Jawi Peranakan who lived in Penang, started the first Bangsawan group called Pushi Indera Bangsawan of Penang that toured the Strait Settlements, Sumatra and Java. Stories from different parts of the world, such as Shakespeare, Indian, Malay and Chinese stories, were played to cater to the multi-ethnic population and a Western dance band was used. In order to attract the Baba and Nyonya to the shows, especially during the Chinese New Year period, Bangsawan troops put on Chinese stories with Peranakan characters or fairy tale comedies with Chinese costumes and music. It was reported in the Straits Echo in 1913 that the Grand Opera Company of Penang performed selected Chinese folk tales or stories with Chinese characters, such as Sampe Eitai and Nai. Dasima. Extra turns consisting of dance, singing and other items were performed when the stats were changed. While the straight Chinese enjoyed watching the Western theatre and local Bangsawan and became the proprietors of Malay opera groups prior to the First World War, it was during the interwar years that they set up their own amateur dramatic clubs, which staged English plays including Shakespeare as well as the Malay Opera. These clubs were amateur in the sense that Baba members came together to learn and play musical instruments and perform on a part-time basis, mainly for the purpose of entertaining themselves. School clubs, such as those of the Penang Free School, staged English and other plays with Malay, Chinese and other performers. The first amateur Baba Bangsawan group was established in 1919 and became more active in the 1920s. Several performances of Bangsawan plays were staged for charity. The advertisement shown in the slide reports that the Bangsawan plays entitled Nai Dasima, As You Like It, and China Kelenteng were performed at the Empire Theatre Hall at Penang Road in aid of the Chinese high school Penang. The show was under the patronage of the Honourable Resident Councillor, the Chinese Consul, the Municipal President and the Assistant Secretary for Chinese Affairs. After the successful performances, the Penang Baba Bangsawan decided to register itself to form the Chinese Amateur Dramatic Association or CADA in 1920 as reported in the Straits Echo. The president of the new association was Mr. Go Sun Cheng, a wealthy Straits Chinese from Penang, who not only played an active role as president and sponsor of the Penang Baba Bangsawan and later the Chinese Amateur Dramatic Association, they collected funds for charitable causes, but was also one of the leaders of the Huyu Xia, League of Helping Friends, a club that ran night classes for learning Chinese. In 1922, 
The Chinese Amateur Dramatic Association performed Chalorong and Chaloring, or The Two Fools, and Petri Nozelin, or Transformation of Transformations. To collect money for the unemployed Chinese laborers at the Theatre Royal Penang. This is a photo from the 1920s of performers dressed for the extra turn of a Portuguese dance in Penang. The male performers wore female costumes, the Baba played the women's parts and were skilled in cross dressing and female impersonation, as well-bred nyonya of the early 20th century were not allowed to go out unaccompanied or to appear on stage. This slide shows the performance of the Chinese Amateur Dramatic Association wearing multi-ethnic costumes. Note that among the performers are a cross-dresser and several Chinese women performers seated in the first row. Children in costumes sit on the floor. According to the people I interviewed, the CADA breathed its last during the Japanese occupation. Props, sets, costumes were stolen from the transfer road premises during the war. Even though the Baba played the women's parts and was skilled in cross-dressing and female impersonation, However, in 1920, there appeared several advertisements in the Straits Echo about an all-female troupe in which the feminine characters were played by Chinese girls. Perhaps the Nyonya could perform as the shows were for the elite Straits Chinese community and were staged to raise funds for the China Famine and Floods Fund. In 1922, there was a report in the Straits Echo about some Nyonya going on stage alongside the CADA male performers. The reviewer praised the acting, singing and dancing of the Nyonya at the performance of the Star Princess, especially Nyonya Brandon as the Queen and Nyonya Acheng as the Princess. In 1926, the amateur Penang Nyonya Bangsawan with an all-female cast was formed. The group became a novelty in Penang. As an advertisement shows, the troupe was managed, staged and performed by Chinese ladies only. This was the first, first attempt at an all-female cast in Penang and in a reversal of roles, women played male parts. The Penang Nyonya Bangsawan performed three Bangsawan plays for charity such as Jula Juli Bintang Tiga, Nai Dasima, and A Merchant of Baghdad. In the interwar years, the Penang Chinese Peranakan performed Malay, European, Chinese, and other stories alongside multi ethnic Bangsawan and Ronggeng performers. The presentation style differed from the plays of the Singapore minstrel groups, such as the Ole Ole Party and the Marilettes that toured Penang. As reported in the newspapers, the latter stage plays in the Bangsawan style called Wayang Peranakan in Baba Malay. Stories over about the lifestyles of the rich Baba Nyonya households focusing on domestic scenes that included the partings and reunions of Peranakan family members the happy-go-lucky attitude of rich husbands, domineering matriarchs or bibet, who controlled the household and the exploits of the maid servants. Some of the plays by the Ole Ole Party and the United Chinese Musical Association of Singapore included Gong Kya Sai, the Foolish Groom, and the Quarrelsome Family. The women's roles were played by men. Menstrual groups such as the Marilettes referred to their place as Singapore Baba Bangsawan in the newspaper reports. The straight Chinese in Penang continued to celebrate the annual Chinese festivals such as Chinese New Year, Potong, Tangchik and many more. From the reports in the Straits Echo and Straits Chinese magazine, 
Chuck Gomez had been a highlight since the turn of the last century, but it was celebrated differently. Prior to the Second World War, the strict Chinese of Penang went onto the streets for three nights in a row to enjoy the full moon during Chuck Gomez. For the strict Chinese, this was a time to show off their wealth and their unmarried daughters to prospective male suitors. Rich Jonia women who were sheltered for the rest of the year would ride in fine style in their kabaya and shining jewellery in horse-drawn carriages through the main streets in town lined by shops decorated with lanterns and oil lamps. On this night, the Nyonya was free to throw oranges into the sea or river in the hope that she would get a good husband. Oranges or gum symbolize good luck. The wish for a good husband is captured in the Hokkien saying, Tim Ho Gam Tan Ho An. If you throw good oranges, you will get a good husband. During Chak Gome, the social clubs of Penang would sponsor the decorated Gu Chia Pe or Bulok Kat that carried members of different musical parties singing Kronchong and other Malay opera hits during Chak Gome in the early 20th century. The Gu Chia Pe moved slowly and stopped at the houses and clubs to entertain people inside. Bintang Sore or Evening Star formed in 1919 was the first musical party of Baba musicians to perform for the Chak Gome celebrations. Their instruments consisted of the violin, frame drum and gong that were employed in the Ronggeng Ensemble. By 1921, other musical groups such as the Jolly Party and the Baba Bangsawan Party had joined the Chak Gome Parade in Penang. They also sang Malay opera songs to the accompaniment of the violin, gong and rabana. A reporter for the Straits Echo commented that the musical associations were extremely popular in the 1920s and 30s. They included the Forget-Me-Nots, Gay Lads, Springdale, Blue Star, Mayflower and Marigold. These groups expanded the Dondang Sayang instrumentation and formed musical string bands which performed Ronjong, Malay and English folk songs. The newspaper report shows that the string band of the Chinese Amateur Musical Party or CAM seated in front of the Bullock Cart in the early 1920s. The members played instruments such as violin, flute, ukulele and mandolin which were used in Kronchong singing. Baba Po Chi Hien remarked that he and a few friends would get together to play music, especially Kroncho, on special nights such as the 1st and 15th of each lunar month. He learned the mandolin, ukulele and drum and formed a Kroncong party with a contrabass added. Kroncong music became so popular that notation and lyrics were published in songbooks such as Penghi Boran Hati by HSL or Lim Seng Hui, a straight Chinese who owned the printing presses in Penang. By the 1930s, the latest modern Anglo-American dance orchestras inspired the straight Chinese amateur bands. Musicians started their own dance or jazz bands. Lim Ken Chuan, who had created a string band called the Music and Recreation Party earlier, formed the Penang Jazz Lads in the 1930s. 
featuring wind and brass instruments. The Penang Dance Band played at social gatherings and accompanied the ballroom dancers at social functions. In the immediate post-war period, the Straits Chinese could no longer afford the Grand Street festivals of the past. The amateur clubs that closed during the Japanese occupation did not see a revival after the war. By then, the Straits Chinese had also lost their elite status and leadership positions under British rule to those from the Chinese educated community. The Myonia, as carriers of an eclectic domestic culture, took jobs outside the household to supplement family incomes. As with the rest of the society, new forms of entertainment such as the cinema, popular music, ballroom dancing and later television began to attract the attention of the younger generation, Baba and Myonia. As interest in the eclectic Peranakan Chinese culture dwindled, some elderly Penang Nyonya, led by Nyonya Yu Bengguat, formed the Dondam Sayang Club in 1954 so that they could meet, cook together, and practice their performing arts. In order to continue the unique Penang traditions of the past, they collected money from Peranakan friends to sponsor a party of Dondang Sayang singers and musicians to travel around town in decorated buses during Chap Gome. Usually, the procession became longer and longer as members of the public joined in their cars and motorcycles just for the fun of it. Baba Po and other members of the former CADA became members of the club. He said that in the 1950s, only a few Nyonya could sing well and a small number of Baba could play the violin. So the club paid Malay and Filipino musicians to provide the music for ronggeng dancing and dondam sayang singing. Paul recalled that some women such as Baby Oyang from Krian Road and Chit Ramla from Perak Lane and Chit Puteh Sa'at from Kedah Road sang asli dondam sayang and ronging numbers. The members enjoyed dancing and ronging and cha-cha twice a month. In 1960, the Dondang Sayang Club staged the Wayang Peranakan play Gong Kya Sai, the foolish bride group that was first performed by minstrel parties in Singapore prior to the Second World War. The variety show of 1960 was under the patronage of the governor of Penang and staged at the New World Park. A major attraction was the reenactment of a traditional Baba Hokkien wedding with the performers wearing Chinese costumes and accompanied by live music played on the Ti Tot Cheng or Saroni. The proceeds of the performance were donated to the Federation School for the Deaf. On the right, you can see the main performers of Gong Kya Sai in their costumes. They include Lim K. Eng, Honey Ho, Froggy Ong, and A Cheng. The plot was about a pampered young man who is still sucking plastic teeth and his mother's efforts to marry him off. The main officers of the variety show and Dondang Sayang Club include Mr. Po Chi Hien, the vice president of the association that I interviewed, Lim Sui Bi, the president, and Tan Kun Hoi, the secretary. The Dondang Sayang Club closed down in the late 1980s. Once a year during Chap Gome, the Nyonya and Baba and invited guests from Singapore, Malacca and Penang would still go around town in their decorated buses to serenade the public as we have described uh, at the beginning of uh, this presentation. The State Chinese Pranakan Association under the leadership of Datuk Ku Ketsu had taken over the organization of the Dodan Sayang tour of the city under Datuk Ku's leadership, 
There was a small revival of cultural activities at the association. In the 1990s, a Bangsawan play, Sampe Eng Tai, was staged with Chegu Barudin as the director. Chegu was made an honorary Baba. The association also ran choir, dancing, and other activities for the members. New dances were choreographed by Nyonya Un Suansi. This is a reflection of how the Penang Peranakan dance differs from those of the South and from the Malay or Chinese dances. In conclusion, the Chinese Peranakan theatre, dance and music that emerged in the cosmopolitan environment of Penang, particularly in the first half of the 20th century, were examples of Malay, Chinese, European and other Asian interactions and flows of cultures. This cosmopolitan identity incorporated notions of morality, reformism and helping the less fortunate through charity. At the same time, the Peranakan held on to their Chinese values, festivals and Hokkien dialect as markers of their cultural roots, status and wealth. While there are many similarities between the Peranakan performing arts of Penang, Malacca and Singapore, there are slight variations, particularly in the Bangsawan Theatre, minstrel songs and the distinct ways of celebrating Chap Gome and other festivals. The stylistic variations exemplify the manifold ways of being Chinese Peranakan in different eras and cities, something that we hope will continue in the new millennium. Kamsia. Thanks to all the Baba and Nyonya and Malay musicians who spent time talking to and sharing their photos with me. This presentation is based on their experiences and their memories. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Tan, for that most interesting presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth speaker is perhaps arguably the most experienced in her topic of presentation, having been learning about it since she was born. <laughs>